Marie, Marie, pull up. Larissa screamed out, Danielle's dead. That minute, I knew I was dead. Those pilots never had a chance. These loved ones never had a chance. They were in flying coffins. They all seem to want to know why you didn't ground the planes after the first crash. He got a bonus. How would I feel? People have died. Where's the justice? Thank you all very much, sir. We've got to walk out now. Thanks. Thank you all very much. Mr. Willenberg, do you have a sense of whether the relatives believe you? We, we had a good, meaningful discussion, so I have a, a lot of respect for these families. They all seem to want to know why you didn't ground the planes after the first crash. What, what, how can you explain that to them? Is it true that you spoke to President Trump to ask him not to ground the planes even after the second crash? All right. Thank you all very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Why are you running away? Do you, don't you feel you owe the public an explanation? Cradle me, I'll cradle you, I'll in your heart with a Danielle Moore of Scarborough, Ontario, was a 24-year-old marine biologist. Danielle is such a good kid. I'll be yours and you'll be. She took a picture of a uh, fall of the <laughs> snow and the eyelashes, and she said, oh, look at this. I am the new model of the new eyelashes. After graduation, she worked on environmental projects and climate change issues all over Canada and was about to go abroad. She was going to go and uh, get some information, bring it back, and share it with her, all the youth to, to understand or get a better understanding how to deal with the climate crisis. Last March, she was invited to a UN environmental conference in Nairobi, Kenya. The phone rang at 6 o'clock here in the morning. They said, um, it's, uh, it's about Danielle. And I said, yeah, Danielle is in Kenya. Is uh, Danielle okay? And he said, no, she's not okay. Danielle had a flight connection in Addis Ababa on Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. And I said, what do you mean she's not okay? Um, she said, the plane crashed. And I, I just screamed. I... Clarissa just screamed out, Danielle's dead. That, that minute I knew I was dead. I was just, you know, forever. Everything's changed. Everything just changes. The Ethiopian air crash killed 157 people, including 18 Canadians. There was an immediate comparison to another crash of the same aircraft type four months earlier across the globe in Indonesia. Lion Air Flight 610. They showed similarities between that and the Lion Air crash. And they had suggested that there was uh, something that was inherent in the plane. And that was the first time I was thinking, hey, there's a problem here. You know, that, um, you know, that, that plane should have been grounded before. There's something that they've missed. The Boeing 737 MAX is the fastest selling aircraft model in the company's history. Boeing has already sold 387 of these planes and there are over 4,000 more on order to dozens of airlines all over the world, including Air Canada and WestJet. Now the MAX is grounded, the production line suspended, and Boeing's reputation for safety is in shreds. Company executives are being marched out the door as secret documents indicate they knew the planes could crash. We asked two American Airlines pilots to come to a Boeing 737 simulator to make a detailed assessment of what the pilots faced in the minutes leading up to the crashes. 
Captains Dennis Tager and Jason Goldberg have been flying 737s for many years. We'll never know what that captain was thinking, but we as pilots can surely put ourselves in this scenario and be more than empathetic. Other items are set up. The MAX is an adaptation of the much older 737 airframe first developed in 1967. Bigger engines were added, which had to be mounted further ahead and higher, a change that gave the plane a tendency to push nose upwards. To counter that tendency, Boeing added a software program called MCAS, the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, designed to push the aircraft nose back down to avoid a stall. Lion Air Flight 610 took off from runway 25 of the Jakarta airport at 6.20 on the morning of October 29, 2018. There were 189 people on board. So at the very first step of the flight, once they lifted off the ground, they had an immediate stick shaker, and it would be on the captain's side. This would be going off continuously. This is an indication to the pilot that the aircraft is about to stall and action is needed. This would not stop. The airspeed would be reading wildly wrong. The altitude would be reading wildly wrong with an accommodating alert. This all happening within seconds of coming off the ground. Two minutes into the flight, the plane banked left to follow the assigned course. Another alarm went off in the cabin, indicating they were turning too airspeed, sharply. Low, airspeed, low, airspeed, low. That is the startle factor, the tsunami that's hitting the pilot. And he hasn't even gotten to this beast known as MCAS. 10 seconds later, the captain requested the first officer to partially retract the flaps. When the flaps came up is when the monster came out of the cage. The retraction of the flaps would trigger the MCAS system. The system was misreading data from a faulty angle of attack sensor mounted on the exterior of the aircraft nose. MCAS would move the horizontal portion of the tail to push the plane nose down. So this MCAS system would run for 10 seconds and take five seconds off. And five, four, three, two, one, bang and then it comes in with its 10 second run back down. The Lion Air pilots pulled back their control columns as the plane began to dive. You're literally trying to wrestle the airplane. At a certain point, it would be like trying to, trying to move a wall. In the last minute of the Lion Air flight, the dive became unrecoverable. I'm sure that it was very apparent to them looking out the windshield that they had lost control of this aircraft. In the aftermath of the crash, it became apparent that the plane had suffered flight control issues and attention focused on the aircraft manufacturer, Boeing. Then came a bombshell. In a private meeting with American Airlines pilots, the company finally revealed to them the existence of MCAS. These guys didn't even know the damn system was on the airplane, nor did anybody else. There was a clandestine recording of that meeting. So we try not to overload the crews with information that's unnecessary so they actually know the information that we believe is important. We flat out deserve to know what is on our airplanes. I don't disagree. In that meeting, Boeing tried to insist that if the MCAS system failed, pilots were the backup. To which we responded, you've got to be kidding me. I knew nothing about the system. How can I be the backup that you so heavily depend on if you don't even inform me? We were upset. When pilots learn that information that is of a critical safety system is not released to us, then we get very disturbed by it. At the end of October in Washington, D.C., crash victims' relatives arrived to see Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg testify before a congressional committee and answer some tough questions about the 737 MAX crashes. I'm grateful and humbled to be here today. 
And I want to convey our absolute commitment to safety, our commitment to learning. The biggest question uh, in my mind is why didn't you ground the plane after the first accident? Especially after we've learned through the last couple of months that they knew about the, uh, the issues and the problems with the MCAS. Mr. Mellenberg, when should you have grounded this plane? Congresswoman, uh, we, we've asked ourselves that question many, many times. And uh, if, we, uh, if we knew back then uh, what we know now, we would have grounded right after the first accident. But it turns out Boeing did know back then most of what it knows now. Among the Boeing internal documents that have emerged in the investigation was this 2015 memo. Three years before the first crash, Boeing engineers warned that the 737 was vulnerable to sensor failures with the MCAS. Another Boeing internal document showed that in June 2018, four months before the first crash, Boeing engineers warned that pilots would have only four seconds to recognize an MCAS misfire and only 10 seconds to correct it. Otherwise, there would be a catastrophic crash. It doesn't surprise me. People are raising concerns about safety engineers. They raise concerns and they say, well, what are we doing here? What's, what's unbelievable is that somehow there was no response to them. And this design slipped through with all the flaws it had. Boeing 737 MAX sales materials emphasized that no pilot training would be necessary for the new version of the plane because it's important to their customers. Southwest had told Boeing, we want you to give us a new 737 that's just like the old 737. We do not want to have to train our pilots any differently. It's gonna cost a lot of money. Two years before the first crash, Boeing's chief technical pilot even bragged about Jedi mind-tricking regulators to convince them that no pilot training was necessary. There was a major financial incentive to keep it that way. They have, I think, 9,000 pilots. If they all have to go through simulators, it takes a long time. So Boeing actually promised Southwest, yes, we will give you exactly that, and we'll give you a million dollars per airplane if, if we fail to deliver that. that. That's how important it was to Boeing. On November 7th, 2018, a week after the first crash, the American regulator issued an emergency airworthiness directive which finally notified pilots of a flight control system that could cause difficulty controlling the airplane and possible impact with terrain. Instead of grounding the plane, remedial measures were recommended to turn off the MCAS in a similar emergency. The pilots of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 had received that directive and studied it, but nobody told them they would have only 10 seconds to perform the new procedure. They had read the bulletin that the FAA had put out. Uh, however, they certainly didn't understand the severity of the system's ability to affect the controllability of the airplane. The Ethiopian plane took off from the Addis Ababa airport at 8.38 on the morning of March 10th, 2019. Once again, there was a malfunctioning sensor that triggered faulty airspeed and altitude warnings in the cockpit. When the flaps retracted and the MCAS kicked in, as happened with Lion Air, the plane began to dive. The pilots quickly followed their instructions to throw two switches that would disable MCAS, but the plane was already configured to dive and the pilots struggled to correct it manually. I can't imagine what the pilots were thinking, not only for their own survival, but for the protection of those people. The plane was in a severe form of roller coaster ride the passengers and crew were thrown up and down. Obviously, these men did everything they could. The passengers in the back, it's really hard to process that um, because I just know how terrifying it must have been. Pull up, pull up. Only six minutes after takeoff, the Ethiopian 737 MAX crashed into a field about 30 miles southeast of the airport. It hit the ground at over 500 miles per hour. I think of Danielle's six minutes. How dark. How scary. 
Did she hold someone's hand? Was she comforted by someone? Did she call for me? When we return, will anyone be held legally responsible for these crashes? Newest arrival in the Boeing family of airliners, the 737 attracts a crowd. Boeing had a sterling reputation for safety, but many present and former employees say that began to change when the company was amalgamated with the McDonnell Douglas Corporation in 1997. Longtime Boeing scientists Stan Sorcher and Cynthia Cole witnessed the compromise of safety. The McDonnell Douglas managers were more cutthroat, and it was all about the bottom line, the, the financial, you know, cut those costs, their profits were more important. In that business model, nobody ever says no. You're just going to follow the plan. That's the Walmart business model. They didn't follow a good capitalist model. They followed greed and putting pe you know, people in the upper echelon, putting their interests first above the workers and the product and just society as a whole. They're doing a disservice to all of us when they do these kind of things. The safety of these aircraft is supposed to be overseen during the manufacturing process by independent representatives of the FAA, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. In recent years, however, supposedly to save money and streamline the process, much of that oversight has been contracted out to personnel paid directly by Boeing. To many of the people who work here, that represents an obvious conflict of interests. Well, the downside is someone can threaten your position at work. You can, you can be, you know, play ball or else. And the managers could say, you know, you keep your mouth shut or you lose your job. So it isn't just salary, it's your salary increase, it's your assignments. You could be reassigned uh, to another thing. You could be replaced by somebody who is less uh, capable of resisting pressure. Relatives who have lost loved ones, if you could please stand so we could thank you all. Thank you for being here. If you could just uh, stand. Mr. Muhlenberg, as I watch those loved ones stand, my anger has only grown. These loved ones lost lives because of an accident that was not only preventable, but was the result of a pattern of deliberate concealment. Boeing came to my office shortly after these crashes and said they were the result of pilot error. Those pilots never had a chance. These loved ones never had a chance. They were in flying coffins as a result of Boeing deciding that it was going to conceal MCAS from the pilots. S Senator, if, if anything I can leave with you today, I want to reinforce the culture of safety at Boeing. Over five million people Dennis Mullenberg repeatedly emphasized his commitment to safety and the values he was taught as an Iowa farm boy. Grown up on a farm in Iowa, my parents taught me the value of hard work and integrity. At the conclusion of the hearings, the mother of one victim confronted the Boeing CEO. Well, you talked about Iowa just like one too many times, and the whole group said, go back to the farm. Go back to Iowa. Do that. You're not the person anymore to solve the situation, but I want to say it to you directly because I don't think you understand what we're saying. I, I, I respect that. I really do. In the end, it's about safety. and I. Even I if you're not capable of doing that. I, I respect your, your inputs there. I just tell you, we are very focused on safety. You know, Boeing are capitalist extremists. They're right at the far end, and they're just, there's no safety that they're looking at. And it's just, I can't believe it. This is corporate manslaughter, you know? I just learned that today. After the second crash, after the Ethiopian airline flight, 8302, who killed our daughter, who murdered our daughter. He got a bonus. How would I feel? 
There are doubts that Congress will do much to rein in Boeing, especially because the company spends millions of dollars lobbying politicians, including campaign contributions to many members of the House Transportation Committee. Do you understand how the rest of the world thinks the whole system is broken? You know, Boeing's not telling the truth. The FAA seems to be out of the, the loop. The senators and congressmen seem to be on the pay of Boeing. The whole system seems broken. Well, the system is broken right now because the FAA has to be changed in its culture. It has to end outsourcing and a system that, in effect, puts the fox in charge of the hen house. The, the system is not broken. Uh, however, At hearings in December, the new FAA administrator, Stephen Dixon, tried to defend the integrity of his organization. He had trouble explaining this internal study from December 2018, three months before the second crash, showing that the FAA estimated that if the MCAS was not fixed, the system would likely cause more than 15 crashes over the 45-year life of the 737 MAX fleet, causing almost 3,000 fatalities. At the time, that information was not shared with the airlines or the public. Is the system broken? Oh, clearly it failed. The system, the certification system failed our pilots, it failed our passengers, and it failed the globe. Recently released internal emails show many Boeing employees had lost faith in the 737 MAX long before the crashes. In 2017, one said the airplane was designed by clowns, supervised by monkeys. Dennis Mullenberg was removed as Boeing CEO just before Christmas, and Boeing has now admitted that pilot training on the MAX would be a good idea after all. There is a U.S. Justice Department investigation of the company's interaction with the FAA, looking to see if there was criminal activity leading to the crashes. But many doubt that any Boeing executives will be prosecuted. No. I, I, I think that all these people in these upper echelons are too related and too intertwined. I don't think they're going to find anything against one of their own. The problem with you know, people have died, and you know, they're, they've got families, they've got life's, lives that they didn't get to live. And for um, Boeing to pay a fine or to pay millions or whatever, where's the justice? In late October, Clarice Moore traveled to Ethiopia to bring back her daughter's coffin and the partial remains that were identified. I want to open up that coffin. I want to see her. I want to hug her. I want to smell her. I want to kiss her. I want to dance with her. I want to hear her voice. I just want to um, continue to be the voice of Danielle and bring awareness to the public. That way, this will never happen to them. Gonna miss the way I walk, gonna miss the way I 